we're going to work with our ENV shield. The ENV shield has the same form factor as the Wi-Fi board. This is the Wi-Fi board here. And one difference that you'll notice is that there are more things on the Wi-Fi board. This is the ENV shield. And something new that we have is an SD card reader and writer. And in the middle here, we have our sensors. And all we have to do is attach our shield to our board. And all we have to do is make sure that the pins are aligned. Now that's easy to do. There's this longer part that doesn't have our pins, our headers. And if you turn it sideways, you'll notice that the pins are labeled the same. And so all we have to do is place this on top and just gently press it in. And that's it. We're ready to work with our shield. All we have to do is plug in our power cable and then go back to our code and upload a sketch. Okay, and you'll see from the lights that this is powered. So let's go take a look at our sketch. Let's take a look at the sketch that is required to make use of our ENV shield. Let's start by opening the library manager. And in there, we need to find and install certain libraries. So let's search for maker ENV, MKR ENV. And this is the library that we need. And so you can go ahead and install it. The next library that we need is Unix time. And this is it. So you can go ahead and install it. And then we also need Arduino underscore JSON. So you can go ahead and install it. This is it. And finally, we need RTC zero. This is it, the Arduino library, and you can go ahead and install it. Once we have all of the libraries, the next thing that you need to do is set your Wi-Fi credentials. And we have that in our Arduino secrets header file. This is it. Let's upload the sketch, see it work, and then come back and analyze the code. Okay, if you see an error such as this, just verify that you've selected the right board and then go ahead and upload it. Once the upload is complete, I will open the serial monitor. And we have a message attempting to connect to the network. Okay, so we have a bunch of outputs and let's take a look at that quickly. So the first line informs us that the microcontroller is trying to connect to the network. The second line notifies us when the microcontroller has connected to the network. Then after that, we get a bit of information we get the ip address that the microcontroller obtained from our network we have our network ssid and things like our signal strength and then further down we have the unix time which we got from the ntp server and the unix time is simply the number of uh, seconds since 1970 and we see the RTC Unix time, which we configured on, on our microcontroller. And beneath those two lines, we can also see the local time. And then on the last line, we have the local, uh, the Unix time, which is what we would save if we wanted to save this data. But then we also see our temperature, our humidity, and our atmospheric pressure, uh, which is collected from our sensors. 
So let's go ahead and look at the code. We can close the serial monitor. We're not logging output continuously. On the first four lines, we'll notice that we're including certain libraries. And these are all custom libraries. So we have a my wireless, my NTP client, my ENV, and my clock. On line six to nine, we have variables and a constant. The constant is the delay, which is five seconds. Uh, we have a, a status, which would hold on to the status of our network connection. We have a timer for the last millisecond that we read. And the milliseconds are simply the milliseconds since we put on the microcontroller. That's on line seven. Line eight has that con line eight has that constant of five seconds. Line nine has our real time clock. If we look at our setup on line 13, we initialize our serial connection. And then on line 14, we wait until we've opened it. So execution doesn't happen. If we don't do that, all of this information is going to flash before we open the serial monitor. On line 17, we, we call my wireless get connected status. And we check whether our current status is equal to uh, the get connected status. And that just tells us whether we're connected. Uh, if we're not, then we, we print out attempting to connect to network. And then we make another call to my wireless get SSID. And if it works, then if we get the SSID, then we call my wireless initialize. We call the initialize function. And then we wait for up to 10 seconds for our microcontroller to connect to the network. And once that happens, we go ahead and initialize our NTP client. And that's done on line 26. On line 28, we get the Unix time from our NTP client. And then on line 29, we check for whether or not we're able to initialize our real time clock. If we're unable to initialize it, then we print out an appropriate notification. And then we stop execution because we can't get time. We really don't need to do anything. On line 33, which we get to, if we're able to initialize the real time clock, we initialize our env sheet. Again, if there's an error, we log that out and we pause execution. And now we're on line 39. And when we get here, we know that we were able to initialize everything prior to this point. So we can go ahead and log that notification. And on line 42, we call a custom function called print data. And we simply put all of this in print data because we would like to keep the code short within our setup function. And again, we also want something that we can use repeatedly. And afterwards, on lines 44 all the way to 51, we just print uh, our current time. And then further down, uh, we get the number of epochs. We get the time in uh, West African time. So that's my locale. locale. Uh, and then we get our milliseconds, and then we get our readings from the ENV shield. That's the final thing that we do on line 51. We don't do anything within our loop function, so we can skip over that. And then we can take a look at our print data. And print data just holds code that lets us print out network information. Now, you'll notice that there are a number of uh, header files and C++ files. Within this project, we have a mywireless.hpp, which gives you the functions required to initialize the Wi Fi radio and to connect to a wireless radio. And this is what it looks like.
And then we have a myntpclient.hpp, which gives you the functions required to read time from an NTP server. And this is what it looks like. And then we have a myenv.hpp. And this gives you the functions required to read the sensor values from the ENV shield. We also have a myclock.hpp, and this gives you a real-time clock. This will let you set time and keep time, and is useful for knowing when exactly we're taking a reading. Okay, so that's it. Feel free to look through the various C++ files and acquaint yourself with the actual definitions of the functions. Thank you. Let's work with the Maker IoT carrier. The kit I'm working with comes in this Opla IoT kit, but it's possible to purchase the shield or the carrier directly. So the kit I got comes with a maker Wi-Fi as well as the carrier and a cover. And it also comes with two sensors. Uh, it comes with a motion sensor as well as a soil moisture sensor. Now, this is the carrier. This is the front of the carrier. And we've got our OLED display here. We've also got five capacitive touch buttons as well as three sensors, temperature, humidity, and luminance sensors. On the back, we have the connector for the maker shield. And we've also got these uh, groove connectors. So they, there are two analog groove connectors as well as an I squared C connector. So the motion sensor that comes in the kit can be connected using a groove connector. This is what it looks like. We have the motion sensor and we have a groove cable. This also has an SD card slot so we can store data locally and we'll get to that in the future. So here you have it. And if you turn this sideways, you'll see, you'll see the labels. So you'll see that the pins are labeled. And what we have to do is match this with our maker shield, with our maker Wi-Fi. And you'll notice that the labeling is the same. So you always need to match the labels. And once you do that, just go ahead and slot this in. And then gently push it in to sit. And that's it. You've assembled it. And later on, when you're done with whatever, you can put this in. You can put this in and screw it in. It comes with screws. But for now, all we need to do is locate our power connector and connect our power to it. So I haven't uploaded the sketch on this one. So let's go take a look at the, the sketch, discuss it, and then we'll upload the sketch and see how it works. We need to ensure that we have some libraries installed before we can run the sketch. So let's go ahead and visit the library manager. Open it up and search for MKR IoT. And we've got the MKR IoT carrier. Be sure to install that. We also need RTC0, our real time clock. So be sure to install that as well. We need Unix time. So go ahead and install that. And finally, we're going to be working with JSON data. So we need Arduino JSON. Go ahead and install that. Once we have all four, we're ready to upload the sketch onto the microcontroller. 
Um, before you do that, make sure that you visit ArduinoSecrets.h and fill in your Wi-Fi credentials. So the SSID goes in line one and the password goes in line two. Now let's quickly discuss our sketch. Lines one to four contain our custom header files. And line six requires the library that we need to work with our carrier. The on line eight, we set our status to idle because that's the initial state of the Wi-Fi radio until it has connected to a network. We'll make use of the variable last millis, which you see on line nine, to keep track of the last time that we did something. And we're going to use that in our loop function in place of a delay. And on line 10, we have a constant my delay, which is set to 60,000 milliseconds, and that's 60 seconds. So we want to do something every minute. And we want to check that 60 seconds are passed in between our function execution within our loop. We'll also define an instance of the clock, which we do on line 11, as well as the carrier, which we do on line 12. Within the set of function, we wait for a second and a half, and then on line 18, we set a variable, which is carrier case. This variable is simply designed to set the sensitivity of the capacitive touch buttons that we saw earlier. So if it's within the case, the sensitivity level is different from if it's outside of the case. Then we start our carrier on line 19 by calling carrier.begin. We need to do this within our setup function, right? And then we pass the address of the carrier object to our custom class instance, and that's done on line 20. This will let us reuse the same carrier instance as we move uh, between various classes. On line 24, we set up our serial interface, so that will let us work with our serial monitor, and then we can log some debugging output. From line 28 to 37, we attempt to connect to our Wi-Fi network. And while we're doing that, on line 29, we print out a status update on our screen. And on line 30, we show that we're attempting to connect to the network. On line 31, we get the SSID, that's the name of the network, and then we print it out. And we do this to the serial. So we'll only see this as debugging output. At this point in time, our screen just shows network with a dot dot. And then on line 33, the actual network connection happens. On line 38, we initialize our NTP client. So we fetch the current time from a server, and then we instantiate an RTP clock that will keep time as long as the microcontroller is powered. This happens with the following code um, from lines 38 all the way to lines 44. And so on line 47, we print to our debug console that we're not now connected to the network. So the last thing that we'll do within our setup is to display the current time and also get the sensor readings. We get the sensor readings on line 62 by calling display sensors within the my carrier. The entirety of our loop function is concerned with whether 60 seconds have passed. So every 60 seconds, we will print out to our serial console the current time and the temperature. 
and then we will call display sensors once every 60 seconds. On lines 98 to 103, we define our display function and it takes a parameter, which is a string. But because this is an OLED display, we have to do a little bit of management. So we clear out the screen on line 99 by using fill screen with all black. And then on line 100, we set the cursor and on line 101, we set our text size to size 3. And then on line 102, we print out the text. Now, there's other interesting code, uh, such as what we have in mycarrier.hpp, where we define a namespace for mycarrier. And you can see all of the functions that we have in there on line 9. We have an initialize function, and this takes the pointer that we passed from the very beginning. And then on line 10, we have a get temperature. On line 11, we have a get pressure. On line 12, we have, have a get humidity. And on line 13, we have a display sensors that takes the time. The implementation for all of this is contained in mycarrier.cpp. And you can go in there and take a look. And that's it. You can then go ahead to upload the sketch and I'll do that. And let's see some of the debugging output that we get. Once the sketch is done uploading, we can open up. And we can take a look at the output from the serial monitor. We see that an SD card is not detected. So next time we can plug in an SD card when we want to run the sketch. But we can also see that we fetched our time. We can see the time on the serial monitor as well as our temperature. And that's it. Thank you.